Hi friends, you must have seen the intro video, so do let me know if you like it in the comment section below. It was made by a great artist named Arvind Kumar Bhartia from Bangalore, India. So special thanks to him on behalf of soft collision community. And secondly, this video is short because we had suggestions from the community. So let's start. Today, we are going to make a video on adding a position sensor on the joints. As you know, in robotics or in most of the electronic industry, we need feedback from the robot on which we can add a controller so we can get the desired position. Today, we are going to simulate an encoder on a rotary joint. Now, if you have seen my previous videos, you would have known this robot which we made from scratch. Today, we will integrate one position sensor on the front wheel of this robot and similarly, we can add three more and have all four wheels publishing the position. So let's start. First of all, we will go to the robot and select the wheel. Just a note, we can only add position sensors on hinge joint or slider joint. So we go to a hinge joint, we go to device, and we add a position sensor. So if we add, here VBOT understands that there is a position sensor. So now let's rename our position sensor as PS underscore one. So here there are two parameters to this position sensor. If you have a real robot and you want to simulate it on VBOTs, you will of course add some noise because your real robot never gives a perfect reading. And secondly, this is a resolution parameter. So if you take a custom make encoder, it always comes with a resolution. So you can plug in custom resolution in place of minus one. So now these are the parameters of uh, position sensor. So of course, now, as most of you would have followed the videos, we tweak our controller. So we go in our controller of the robot. And now, first of all, we include script, which connects our position sensor from the simulator to the controller. So now we will make a pointer, we will use GPS as reference. So we will have position sensor. Uh, it should turn green. So you see it's green now. So our script is recognizing what the position sensor object is. Let's name it as PS. And this will be a pointer to our position sensor. So now position sensor, get position sensor. So now this line we integrate so that, and here we will write PS underscore one, because this is what we named our position sensor. And last but not the least, we enable the position sensor so that it gives us reading after every 64 milliseconds, which is our time step. So this is initialization of position sensor. And now inside our while loop, which runs continuously till we stop the simulation, let's print the value. So SPD, see out. Let's uh, name it as wheel one. 
So the syntax for this is we need to define an object which we initialized before and we write get value v capital bracket. So now we get a double as an output because we are calling a member function get value which is situated in position sensor dot HPP. And of course we make it in a new line. So we complete it by end end. So first let's save this. Save this. Let's compile it. Oh, it compiles successfully. Let's reset. And now when I so we'll play this and now you see when we move our robot, we see the value. And by the way, this value is given in radians. So this is a nomenclature in VBOTS where if you have a rotary joint, it gives you value in radians. And if you have a linear joint, you get value in meters. So now some of you must be thinking that what will I do with the value in radian? So if we know the diameter of our wheel, so we can multiply it by diameter and we can get exact distance in meters. Now, problem in this case is I need my this position to be zero, but it is publishing some other position. And if you see functionality is right because if we go front, the value is incrementing. And if we come back, it's decrementing. So functionally, we have made our encoder uh, position sensor correct. But let's see how we can make this position as our zero position. So we will pause for a moment. Now, the place where we defined our position sensor in the joint parameters, we have the position. So if I make this position as zero and I will save this. So now if I run it, I can see I get a value of zero. Oh, we wrote wheel one here. So we'll compile it again, reset. So yeah. I get a value of zero because this is a very small value of the magnitude 10 raised to minus one. So now when I move my robot, my value goes on incrementing. We will have a space here so that it's easy for us to view. Yeah, so now you view the difference. So now when I go forward, value increases when I come back, value decreases, and this is what we want. If you know in the environment where you have your zero position, you just need, you can pause this, you just need to pick your robot and place it in a position where you feel you want your zero to be. And now, bam, this is the zero position of your robot. So now when I click on play, and I move my robot, it starts and takes its initial position as zero. This was all about integrating position sensor with rotary joint. I'm sure this will be a very important tutorial because if you talk in terms of moving robot, you definitely have navigation. And once you consider navigation, you always think about how can I converge to my required trajectory. This value of position sensor can be used in your PID controller and you can reduce the error. If you didn't get the last part, it's fine because you are just started to learn about VBOTS and you'll definitely come across controllers, Kalman filters and basic PID controllers. So this is all for now. Thank you. Have a great time. Happy coding.
Bye-bye.